Radiative heating of land and water is a lab that is going to allow students to see how solar energy heats water and land differently or unevenly. And so we're going to start off with two beakers. One of them has 200 milliliters of soil and the other has 200 milliliters of water. And you'll want to set these out in advance, maybe a day early. And so that way it allows your water and your soil to get to room temperature or closer to room temperature before starting this lab. And we have them set up to where they're equal distance from our clamp lamp here. And we're going to be using this clamp lamp to provide our solar energy. It's going to model our sun in this activity. Inside each, I have a thermometer. It's just a, a regular digital thermometer. I have it set to Celsius. And I have it going through these popsicle sticks that have a hole in them. They look just like this. You can also do this with really thick cardboard and just punch a hole in it. What that's going to do is it's going to keep my thermometers upright and it's going to allow me to have them in the beakers without actually touching the beaker itself because I want to take my temperature of the, my water in the soil, not of the glass beaker. And so I'm going to let those sit there for just a moment on Celsius to where they can get to our, our good starting temperature before we turn our light on. While I have these on and while they're sitting here, this is a student sheet that you're going to give to your students. And you can see at the top as a place for them to make a prediction. So this is where you are going to have your students tell if they think water is going to have the greatest difference in temperature when we turn the light on, or if soil will have the greatest temperature difference when we turn the light on. And so a good way to get them to start forming ideas about this is if they've ever been to the beach before, get them to think about the temperatures of the sand and the water at different times of day. If they haven't been to a beach before, if they've been to a swimming pool before, you can use the same idea, the grass around the pool and the land around the pool compared to the water itself at different points in the day. And so they're going to make their prediction here and then they have a data table that has places for them to record temperatures throughout the lab. This lab takes 24 minutes and it is timed. And so every three minutes, they're going to be recording the temperature. For the first 12 minutes, they're going to record the temperature of water and soil in Celsius as our light is on. So as the sun is out and as our land and our water are heating. And then we're going to turn our light off or our sun off and we're going to measure every three minutes the temperature of water and soil in degrees Celsius as they are cooling for another 12 minutes. And so it's going to be important that they have a stopwatch. They probably need someone in the group that is responsible for watching the time and someone maybe that's responsible for recording the temperatures. I, I normally do this in a group of four and I have one student that's watching the soil temperature, one student that's watching the water temperature so that we can get those at the same time. One person that's responsible for recording them and one person that is responsible for keeping up with the time or the stopwatch. And so you want to touch the thermometers as little as possible. If they go off, just tell your students to turn them right back on immediately, but we don't want to be messing with them. So we want them positioned to where the people that are going to be reading the temperatures can see them easily. Now mine have been sitting here for a little while, and so I feel confident that I can go ahead and take my zero minute temperature. So right now my water is at 23.3 degrees Celsius and my soil is at 24.9 degrees Celsius. So you can see I've recorded that on my sheet for the zero minute mark. And the next time I'm going to record is at three minutes. So I'm going to set my stopwatch, turn on the light, and we're going to wait three minutes and check our temperatures. Okay, at three minutes, my water is 24.1 degrees Celsius and my soil is 27.7 degrees Celsius. So we're going to add that to our data table where it says three minutes. Okay, at six minutes, my water temperature is 24.5 degrees Celsius and my soil temperature is 29.3 degrees Celsius. So we're going to add that to our data sheet for six minutes. You can see that the water temperature is not going up quite as much as the soil temperature is right now. OK, 
Okay, at nine minutes, my water is 25.1 degrees Celsius and my soil is 30.3 degrees Celsius. So we're going to add that to our data. In about 30 seconds, we're going to take the 12 minute temperature and when we do this, we want to stop our heating process and start our cooling process. So when we reach 12 minutes, I'm actually going to turn the light off at the same time that I take our temperatures for 12 minutes. Okay. So at 12 minutes, Water is 25.6 degrees Celsius and soil is 31.2 degrees Celsius. So we should have our top table filled in right now for our heating temperatures. And now we're going to start looking at how long it takes them to cool. Okay, at 15 minutes, my water is 25.5 degrees Celsius and my soil is 30 degrees Celsius. At 18 minutes, my water is still 25.5 degrees Celsius and my soil is 29.2 degrees Celsius. Let's see that one, the black sheet. At 21 minutes, the water temperature is 25.5 degrees Celsius and the soil temperature is 28.6 degrees Celsius. So we're going to add that to our data tables. And you notice that the water temperature has not been changing. And for our Final measurement of time at 24 minutes, my water temperature is still 25.5 degrees Celsius and my soil temperature is 28.1 degrees Celsius. So we have our data tables completely filled out now. We're going to use this information to make a double line graph. So we are going to plot our temperatures for soil and water as they're heating and then as they're cooling using one color for soil and one color for water so that we can graph them on the same graph, which is going to make it, make it able for us to compare the two as they're heating and cooling.